Okay, so yesterday we talked about monatomic ions. Today we're going to talk about how we put those together and form binary ionic compounds. So if you think that the name says it, binary means two ions that make up the compound, specifically two monatomic ions that go into it. So these are going to be single atoms, single elements, not polyatomics. We'll get to the polyatomics a little bit later in this lesson. Um, <clears throat> so kind of how we do that, remember, positive charges, they must equal the total negative charges, so we're neutralizing the charges. That's kind of our whole idea here with bonding all together, at least for ionics. We're going to use what's called the crisscross method. So the cation is always first. Remember that the cation typically are metals, all right, but whether they're metals or not, when we get to covalent next week, it'll be the cation first always, even though we don't have any metals. It's the absolute value of the each ion's charge. So if we have an example, if we look at an example, all right, let's say I had Na, its charge is 1 plus, and let's say I had Cl, which is 1 minus. <clears throat> so the charges to crisscross those, I'm going to take just the number. We're going to leave the symbol behind, just the number. We're going to cross it over. It's going to become a subscript. So I want to see you draw your arrows in at first, and eventually we will get away from that. So then when we crisscross those over, our final formula based on that crisscross would be NaCl, Na1Cl1, but we don't have to write the ones in there, so we can just get rid of those and just write it as NaCl. The last step, this is one that people forget about often, is that we need to make sure our subscripts are in the lowest whole number ratio possible. Whole number ratio. This is what's called an empirical formula. In our next unit on the mole, we will talk more about empirical formulas, but for now, just make sure with ionic compounds, all right, remember, these are the rules for ionic compounds only, we will write them in the lowest subscript. Covalent have their own set. We'll get to that next week. <clears throat> now, as far as naming, so that was writing the formula for an ionic compound where we take the two ions, we crisscross them over, we get our formula. They balance out. Naming them is going to be kind of the same process. Basically, all we do is we take the cation name, we take the anion name, and we just kind of smush them together. We're going to write our ions first and get our formula first, and then we will name the compounds. We're going to practice that here um, right now. Magnesium and iodine, first thing. If you look at your reference packet, magnesium, Mg2+. If we were to name that compound, all right, or I'm sorry, not name that compound, name that ion, it's the magnesium ion. All right, iodine would be I, one minus charge. We would call that iodide. Magnesium was a type one. If you look on your colored in periodic table that we did the other day with the three types, iodine is a type three, so it would be iodide when we name it. Okay, so we do the crisscross method. Take just the number, not the charge with it. Crisscross those over, so our final formula would be Mg1. We don't have to write the one in there. <coughs> and I2. Once you have the formula, we'll take these two terms. One of these terms uh, in the names we can get rid of. We can get rid of the term ion because it's no longer an ion when they come together and bond. So our final name of this compound, and I just realized my mistake, it's not iodine, it's iodide. So our compound then, we're just going to take it, we're going to name it magnesium iodide. Just put them together. Ionic, it is that simple. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Let's do the next one together. Potassium. If we look at it, it's going to be K1 plus, sulfurs 2 minus, crisscross those over to get our formula. Our final formula would be K2S. So again, this is the potassium ion. This is Sulfur becomes sulfide, so our final answer would be potassium sulfide. Well, you guys go ahead and try the next two on your own. So, chlorine very quickly, Cl1 minus, aluminum, Al3 plus, crisscrosses over, take just the numbers, not the charges. Now, there's something interesting, right? Which one always comes first? The cation always comes first, so our final answer has to be AlCl3, not Cl3Al. So our name here, metal is always first, aluminum chloride, or this one, 
Down here, our charge zinc is a 2+. plus. It's part of our mini staircase. If you look back on your colored-in periodic table, you should see it. It's part of the mini staircase. Silver, zinc, and cadmium, aluminum, and gallium, we all know their charges. You know, they're not transition metals. Bromine, Br1-, minus. again, the crisscross method. We're going to get Zn, Br2 for our formula, and our name is going to be zinc bromide. Zinc bromide. These ones we didn't do in class. They're here if you want for some extra practice. We did do these ones next. Um, so you'll notice these are transition metals here. They've got that Roman numeral. What does the Roman numeral mean? The Roman numeral tells us the charge of the transition metal. It does not tell us how many of the transition metals we have. It tells us the charge. It will help us to figure out how many we need of each atom, but we'll see how that is as we do the crisscross method. So, same process we were just doing. Write your ions out. Cu, 1 plus, because this Roman numeral 1 means it's a 1 plus charge. Oxygen, look at the periodic table, 2 minus. Take them, crisscross them over. Our formula is going to be Cu2O. Now, when you go to name this, we don't say, oh, it's copper 2 because of this. We keep the same name of the ion that we had originally. It's this copper 1. So our final answer here is going to be copper 1 oxide. Copper 1 oxide because that's the ion that we had originally from over here. You can't just go and change it. This is just telling you how many you need to balance out. Okay. Let's do another one. Copper 2. Cu2+. plus. You guys try the rest of these on your own. All right, so we'll come back together. Cu2 plus. Chlorine is a 1 minus. Crisscross these over. Our formula is going to be CuCl2. Our name should be copper 2 chloride. Keep the same name that you had originally from your original ions. Remember, the Roman numerals do not tell us subscripts. They tell us the charge. Moving a little quicker, mercury 2 plus, oxygen is a 2 minus. When we crisscross these, you'll see something interesting. We get Hg2O2, but do we really need two of those to balance out? No, we don't because a plus 2 and a minus 2 will cancel each other out. So this is why we will make sure in the end that we reduce them down to the lowest um, possible ratio, the lowest whole number ratio. So that's going to be HgO, and our name is mercury. 2 oxide. Last one down here, nitrogen is a 3 minus, aluminum is a 3 plus, there's the L for aluminum. Same thing, we will reduce them down because a 3 minus and 3 plus will cancel each other out. Remember, make sure that your metal goes first, your cation. ALN is our formula, this is aluminum nitride. Aluminum nitride. All right, so now we're going to talk about naming ternary compounds, and ternary just means basically more than two, three or four. They have polyatomic ions in here, not atoms, ions. Eight versus eight, this just means it's dealing with oxyanions. If you look at your polyatomic ion list, most polyatomics have oxygen in them. Uh, eight means you have one more oxygen. Eight means you have one less. For honors chem, we don't need to worry about that because you will have a list of polyatomic ions on your final exam. Um, but if you take AP next year, you want to start committing this to memory because you will not have a list of polyatomics. You need to know how to name them. As far as naming compounds, ternary compounds, it's the same as uh, binary. We take our cation and anion. Make sure your polyatomic always has parentheses. We'll see why later on why that's so important. Again, we're going to use our crisscross method. It's still an ionic compound. Every ionic compound will use crisscross method to write the formula. We're going to name our compounds. We're going to put both of the names together. Remember, transition metals, they need Roman numerals. Again, what do the Roman numerals tell us? The charge. Charge of our transition metal. TM is transition metal. All right, here we go. Let's practice. All right, split our compound. Draw a line down there to split your cation and your anion. When you get to a second capital letter, that's when you know your cation has stopped. To the left is the cation because cations always come first. 
then you're going to put a parenthesis around everything else if there's more than one element. If there's more than one element, you know you have a polyatomic ion. So Na, what is Na? Its name is sodium. OH, if you look at your list, this is one you had to have memorized for your quiz. This is hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide. Go to the next one. Split the compound first. Where are you going to split it? After the cap first capital letter. I'm sorry, when you get to a second capital letter there, it's the first one in this example. So K is potassium. ClO3, that's a polyatomic. It's more than one element. So put parentheses around there. Go to your list. This is one you did not have to have memorized. This is chlorate. You can go ahead and try the last three here on this slide. So you can see the answers, split them up, calcium nitrate, sodium acetate. This is one of the two formulas you need to know for acetate. The other one is C2H3O2. Down here, this one's tricky because you have ammonium. This is the only cation that's a polyatomic that we will use in this class. So you can't use the trick of drawing your line after the when you get to a second capital letter because there's nothing that's H4NO3. You've got to recognize that, hey, ammonium, ammonium is... NH4 plus, and this is not nitrate, it's nitrite, because it's NO2. <clears throat> so now, writing the formula, it's the same as we did before. Write your ions. K, 1 plus. Hydroxide, you need to know it's OH in parentheses, the charge is on the outside. We're going to crisscross our charges, only the numbers, forget about the, uh, the signs. So our formula then here is going to be KOH for potassium hydroxide. You try ammonium acetate. Ammonium acetate is going to be NH4. The 1 plus charge is ammonium. Acetate, again, it could be two formulas, C2H3O2. 1 minus, crisscross it over. So our final formula would be NH4, C2H3O2. All right. Don't worry about these. You can do them on your own. Check your work on my website. Homework was page three. It's the first four right here. What I wanted you to do was to show the crisscross method first and then go ahead and write your formula, NaCl. You're going to do that for all of those. And again, when you have polyatomics, you want to make sure you draw the parentheses in there that the charge is on the outside. It's a good habit to get into. Otherwise, you'll get into trouble later on if you don't do so.